Uploading YouTube videos from Final Cut Pro sounds really easy, but there's a ton of editors still making mistakes that wastes time and ruins their videos. So today I'm gonna to show you what those mistakes are, how to avoid them, and upload the highest quality videos in the shortest amount of time, all in just two clicks. Ready to become an upload pro? All right, so here I am in Final Cut Pro. I've got my project, I'm ready to upload it to YouTube. And the first mistake that most editors make is using this built-in YouTube upload option in Final Cut Pro. Let's take a look at it. The reason why it's a bad option is it takes longer to export, the quality isn't as good as it can be, and it's longer processing time once you've uploaded it to YouTube. Let's take a look at the settings. Let's change the resolution to match our project size, and let's change it to better quality. Look down here. It's about 320 megabytes in size, but it's a .mov file, which is not what YouTube recommends. So YouTube recommends that you use an MP4 file and your audio is AAC and the H.264 codec. We'll look at frame rate and bitrate in a little bit, but first let's go back to Final Cut Pro. Let's cancel here and click on the share button up here and click on add destination. This thing is such a piece of garbage, we can just delete it. Right click on it and select delete. Now you won't be tempted to use it again. If you want to add it back, no problem. Just select add destination and then drag and drop that over here. All right, so how can we quickly export for YouTube? Press Command E to bring up the share window and we can quickly preview and skim and see our project right here. We also see right here what our file is going to be. It's going to be 1920 by 1080. It's going to be 23.98 frames per second and it's two minutes, 51 seconds long. Over here, it shows us what file format we're using and the estimated file size. We can change the name of it right here and we can add a description put the creator's name on it and add finder tags here. These aren't the YouTube tags, but 2.66 gigabytes is way too big and .mov is wrong. So go to settings and click on video codec and select H.264. Okay, that's better. It's 400 megabytes in size. It's smaller, but it's still .mov. So click on format and go to computer and under codec, let's do a better quality. It takes longer to encode or export, but not too much. And it's worth it to have a higher quality. We can change our resolution and we can also set what action we want to happen once the export is done. Right now, it'll open it up in QuickTime, but I don't want that, so I'll just click here and select Save Only. And now look at this. We have a .mp4 down here, and it's about 430 megabytes in size. So I'll click Next, and I'll find where I want to save it. I'll give it a name, and then I'll click Save. Now, what if you need to do that over and over? You don't want to press Command E, go to Settings, make the changes each time. Instead, what you can do is save this as a preset. So click on share destinations, let's add a destination and double click on export file to add it over here on the left. And let's change format to computer and codec to better quality and resolution. Let's set it to 4K to the highest that we can so that if we do have a 4K project and we export it, it will adjust to that size. And Final Cut Pro will automatically adjust to whatever your video size is to anything below 4K here. For action, let's change it to save only, and then let's rename it. I'll select it and I'll click on it once and I'll put in the new name. We'll call it YouTube and press enter. Now I can right click on it and I can select make default. And you'll see it has this word default next to it. Now I can use that keyboard shortcut, command E to quickly use that share destination. If we click on settings, we can see we've got computer, h264.mp4, we're looking good. So let's click next, we'll give it a name and we'll find where we wanna save it and then click on save. Now Final Cut Pro will start to export it. Look at this up here in the left hand corner. Click on this little icon here. This opens up the background tasks window. This shows us what is happening, what Final Cut Pro is doing. And right now it's sharing that video file for us and it shows us the how far along it's come. It's about 40%. We can cancel it right here by pressing the X. And if we close it, we can also see kind of an abbreviated quick look of how far it's going. So right now the export's at 50% based on that sweet donut. You can also open it up by going to window back and selecting background tasks or pressing command nine. All right, this thing's almost done. Let's go check out YouTube settings recommendations again. So for frame rate, we have some options here and then they have this also helpful. Other frame rates are also acceptable. So why not just say most frame rates or all frame rates are acceptable? All right, anyway, <laughs> let's look at bit rate. So YouTube requires some bit rate ranges for different videos. So for 1080p, they recommend eight to 12 megabits per second or for 4K somewhere in this range. So let's take a look at our video that we just exported and see if it's in this range here. So I'll go back to Finder and I'm gonna double click this to open it in QuickTime and then press Command I to bring up this info window. And you'll see here that our data rate is about 20 megabits per second. So it's actually higher than what YouTube recommends. So how can we dial in and get the exact right bitrate? 
Well, we have to use an app called Compressor. It's a standalone app that Apple owns and it works really well with Final Cut Pro to do custom and advanced encoding. You can buy Compressor for $50 and it comes in really handy. In Compressor, click on this plus sign in the bottom left-hand corner and select new setting and change format to MPEG-4 and give it a name. Let's call this YouTube and we're gonna call it 4K. Then press OK. Over here, click on video and down here at average data rate, change it to custom. And let's look back here at our recommended settings. They want somewhere between like 35 to 68, depending depending on the frame rate. Let's go for 45. So down here, I'll enter 45 followed by three zeros. And that gives me 45,000 kilobits per second or 45 megabits per second. Press enter and then click on audio. Make sure format is AAC and let's increase the bit rate to 320 for a crisper sounding video. Okay, now we can close compressor and go back to Final Cut Pro. Click on the share destinations and let's add a destination and double click on compressor settings. Close this and scroll down to the custom section. Select our YouTube 4k and press ok now i can close this window and when i'm ready to export a 4k video i just go up here click on the share then select youtube 4k i can go to settings and change my preset that i had saved in there if i want and then i can click next and let's save it as 4k click save all right, so that video is exported. Here it is, our 4K video. Let's open it up in QuickTime and let's look at the data rate. So I'll press Command-I and you'll see right here, our data rate is 44.64. Ooh, so close, but it just has to be in that range. So this is perfect for uploading to YouTube. So let's go to YouTube and click Create, Upload Video. And then I can drag and drop files here from Finder or click on Select Files. And let's select our 4K video and press Open. It'll start uploading. And while it's doing that, we can add our title, a description and a custom thumbnail. As you spend more time in Final Cut Pro, you might find the magnetic timeline confusing or hard to use, and you may be tempted to want to turn it off, but I don't recommend you do that. The magnetic timeline is a really powerful tool in what separates Final Cut Pro from other video editing software. So I put together a video and I highlight eight Final Cut Pro tools that makes using the magnetic timeline editing bliss. Click here to check it out.